Is this you? Oh man, I wish I could compose music for my fantasy world and or upcoming VTuber debut, but I don't know the first thing about music theory. Yeah, same Siv. That's why today I'm gonna teach you how to compose a song without having to learn any in-depth music theory. Sorry, you're gonna have to learn a little. Except unlike last time when I did something like this, I, uh, I don't know anything about music composition, so I'm learning with you. So from my background, I might have exaggerated a teensy bit when I said I knew nothing about music theory. I actually played piano for 10 years, from 4 to 14. Oh gee, oh my gory, then you know everything! No, I know how to press the keys I memorized. Um, I am the opposite of those kids who never practice and just learn to sight read. I memorized everything so I didn't have to learn how to read music. I kind of did. I can point to notes, but that's not the same as reading it and playing it. Uh, I know how to press the keys, I know their names, and that's about it. I know sharps are a half step up and flats are a half step down. I know that they're the black keys on a piano, kind of. It's more complicated than that. Uh, I know about arpeggios and chords, and I can tell you what any given thing on a sheet of music is, but that doesn't mean I understand composition. In the past, I've composed like two songs from slamming notes until something sounded good, uh, but today I'm going to find a better way, and you guys are going to come with me. So let's talk about the resources I'm going to use. Firstly, in college, I took a music theory class for game designers, and it was like 90% music history and also it was during the plague. So uh, it was pretty scuffed, it uh, didn't teach me that much. But I still have some of the handouts and when I followed the steps in those handouts during the class, I made stuff with relative ease that didn't sound awful. Not sounding awful, that's all I'm going for. I'm going for not terrible because this is my first thing that I'm composing with any knowledge. So you know, I can't expect it to be good at the first step. I'm not gonna be Mozart at this point in my life. All I need to get, do is get to a point where someone who knows nothing about music says, hey, that's not bad, and I will be content. After this, I am going to watch some people's YouTube videos. <gasps> well, then I'm going to just go grab this. Okay, Sim, do it. Why haven't you yet? Hmm? I dare you. Uh, I got a link to all my material in the doobly-doo, and I'll also link a super basic guide to reading sheet music there too, if you're starting from absolutely zero. Third, I'm going to try to write a song. I have this software called MuseScore, which is a sheet music writing software. Yes, I know that requires music theory. Um, and I'm only gonna kinda teach it to you, but listen, it's pretty simple. Uh, to use this software, you just press N, you move it over the note you want it to make with the arrow keys until it makes the sound you want. You adjust the length. This one means it lasts the whole measure. That's these two bars. And these ones mean that it lasts fractions of a measure. Right, that out of the way, Let's just dive right into it. Hi, editing bell here. So I just wanted to interrupt and teach you loosely how to comprehend sheet music. I know I said I wasn't going to, but now I am to ensure that you, uh, that at least the future resources we're using make a little bit of sense. Uh, but I learned all this stuff when I was like four, remember? So um, just like you might struggle to explain how English works to someone, uh, I am going to maybe miss things. Uh, there are definitely better resources out there for this than me, but um, I'm gonna do my best. So, as you may have gathered, every note has a name. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and then you go back to A, and repeat. Uh, depending on how high you are on this graph, the higher the note is. Uh, this is the, this here is middle C, uh, C4, because it's the fourth C up from the very bottom of the musical graph, and it goes in the middle. And then you write D like this, E, F, G, A, B, and this is C again. And you can kind of just count up and down from there to figure out what any given note is. A sharp is a half step or half tone higher than the note written. It's written like this. And A flat is a half step or half tone lower. And those are written like this. There's a lot more notation than just that, but those are the basics. Chords happen when you play multiple notes at once. All the chords have nice sounds, and different names, but you don't need to know those to get started. You can just Google the notes in them and put them into something like MuseScore to see how it sounds if you're trying to figure out what any given chord sounds like. Chord progressions are series of chords playing in order, and these are the things that give songs their general vibe, I guess. Like they're the what fill a majority of the space and time. Think about guitars drumming along to any given song. That's your chord progressions. Different chord progressions have different sounds, but I admittedly don't know any of them or how to make them.
So first and foremost, what I like to do is to set together the topic or just like the story vibe of what you're trying to go for. The next step that I like to do is to find a chord progression that I really like. Just pull up a random chord progression generator. And so the easiest way to come up with a melody for beginners is to just have your chords looping and then you start singing a singular note, but just focus on the rhythm. So. Use this as an example. How would we write a melody line over these chords? If you're a songwriter, you might just try stuff out. Just try singing some melody lines over the top till you find something you like. And of course, that's totally fine. But what if you're struggling to come up with ideas? First up, let's look at the notes from the chords. So here's our progression again. And each chord has three notes. The A minor has a, C and E. The G major has G, B and D. The F major has F, A and C. And the last chord, the E7, has four notes. E, G sharp, B and D. Instead of playing these entire chords, let's just play one note from each chord, all right? So for my A minor chord, I'll just play A. For G major, I'll just play the B. For F major, I'll play C. And for E7, I'll just play the D. So I've picked one note of each chord, and it gives me this simple ascending pattern of A, B, C, D. And one in A minor with the A at the bottom, that's called the root position. And then there's the first inversion with the C at the bottom, and then the second inversion with the E at the bottom. A non-chord tone will create a certain degree of tension in comparison to a chord tone, but that however tense it is, you're never more than a step away from a resolution. And my advice here would be to not allow yourself to get too locked into the chord pattern as a rhythmic structure. Try to find rhythmic ideas in your melody line that change at different speeds to the chords below. It's far more important to the recognition of the theme than the pitches themselves. It's almost unrecognisable. There's no Darth Vader marching towards me there, mate. Whereas if you just play the rhythm, I'd argue that there's more Darth Vader in that than there is in the tone. But the rhythm is a vital part of making your motif uh, interesting. So, with this information, it sounds like our first step is to pick out a vibe. I made a playlist. And yeah, I'm going for something loosely like that. I think something like this will sound like it could be Telethenian music from my fantasy world, which is the main reason I want to learn to compose. I want to make music that sounds like it could come from the different places in my world. I also, by the way, if you want to know more about the music of my world, uh, I made a video about that with someone who actually knows a thing or two about music theory, like has their major in it. So uh, if you want to know more, please go check that out. Link uh, above and in the doobly-doo. But anyway, now, like I said in the beginning, I'm not going to worry too much if it doesn't sound exactly like how I want. Um, my goal is complete, not good. I can make it good later. Next, chords. Um, I'm going to use this random chord generator, specifically this random chord generator, chordchord.com. I kind of just messed with it until it had a chord progression. I think I kind of liked it, kind of had the vibe I was going for. Um, I don't know, I'll probably learn more as I start working with it. Uh, and it sounds like this. Next, I looked up what specific notes were in those chords, opened up Muse Chords, and made those chords. And then I was ready to start randomly picking notes. But strategically now, not completely randomly. Uh, the here, so sorry, yeah, here are the chords. Hi, it's Bella from Five Months Later. I became a VTuber. Uh, it's a whole thing. Obviously, I'm not using the song to debut anymore, but I just want—I still want to make this hypothetically Telethenian sounding song. Uh, anyways, I'm rewatching all the videos now to figure out what I was even doing, and then I'll get back to things. Okay, so after listening to this again, uh, with the little melody I picked out here, uh, this is a good start, but it sounds too complete and it isn't long enough. I think this ending needs to go further away, and the middle here needs to sound more open-ended, like a question, and then we'll answer it in uh, repeats of the 
chorus. Uh, yeah, I clearly lack the language for this. I'm relying on my instincts here. Okay, what I'm gonna do is, is fiddle with this until it sounds better. Uh, repeat this sort of like chunk phrasing, this sort of four chord progression here, mm, uh, three or four times, and then bring it back to the resolution I have now. Uh, this isn't gonna be a very long song, but that's okay. Here we go. Okay, I think we did it. I spent the last five months getting over perfectionism and now we're here, yay. Okay, this is just for me messing around until I like the way it sounded. It didn't end up sounding exactly like my references, but I'm pretty satisfied. Satisfied. It sounds like a song. All right, next I'm gonna change the instrument, maybe hum a melody line. Um, I'm not gonna write any lyrics today, uh, but feel free to write your own if you want, steal the music, etc. I don't care. All my work, as always, is in, under Creative Commons 4, which means you can use it and monetize it whenever you want. And it's, uh, as long as you credit me, that's fine. That's your prerogative. Um, I'm a very firm believer in intellectual openism. Uh, that's not the phrase. It, I'm cl clearly, um, listen, it is 11 p.m. on a Friday night. I'm sorry. Uh, I am... But I'm a big, I really am a big believer in uh, sharing information with the world and not gatekeeping it. I just think that better things come from groups of people working on things. Uh, so yeah, feel free. So this brings us to the conclusion of the video and the moment you're all waiting for, the song I taught myself how to compose. I know this was a little hectic because this isn't really an area of expertise, but uh, I hope that seeing my process helped you figure out, um, you know, how you might learn this for yourself. Uh, you just gotta research, you compile your advice, and then once you've got an idea for the basic process, you just gotta go through it yourself. Cause you learn way more by doing it, you know? And it's not about perfectionism. It's about getting it done. And the good, being good at it, that's gonna come later. Uh, I do a lot of jumping into different projects and creative mediums, uh, media, uh, in this channel. So if you had fun today, please subscribe for more world building tools and fantasy videos. Thanks for watching and let's listen now to the final piece.